um, for a while now, we have been offering all of the content that we that we do, um, the podcast, um, any of recordings from our courses or retreats, any artifacts really that come out of Buddhist Geeks that we offer back to the world. Um, we offer them using a specific uh, uh, licensing, which is called Creative Commons, that really arose as part of the internet, you know, a, a new way of trying to identify the different ways that information can be shared um, when, when there's so much of it and it's so freely available. And there's a certain class of this Creative Commons um, licensing that is considered kind of the most open right below public domain, like very just like it's free. Anyone can use it for any purpose. And, uh, and this is called a free cultural work. So if a free cultural work in the creative common system means that anyone can take the content that you license this way. They can uh, use it for any purpose they want, even including making money from it commercially. Um, they can remix it. They can adapt it. Uh, and the only stipulations are either that it's by attribution, meaning that you have to attribute where it comes from originally, which makes a lot of sense to me, again, being in a tradition that, that sort of considers lineage important, like we're just honoring mm -hmm. and respecting, like, where does this come from? Like, I didn't just make mm -hmm. this shit up. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and then the other thing is you can stipulate, though we don't do this currently, you can stipulate that people who do change it or adapt it have to, have to continue to license it in the same way. Um, to mm -hmm. use the same kind of licensing, which is called share alike. Um, and so, yeah, we offer everything we do through this, um, this free cultural work licensing, Creative Commons by Attribution International 4.0 license. Um, and the, the reason for that, and this is the reason for the open source Dharma project, is that in the tech world, open source has won. Open source is the dominant model. And, and some people don't realize that, but Microsoft now has opened up most of their code base is open source. Um, mm -hmm. Most tech companies discovered that if a lot of the stuff that they're building off of is being contributed to by a large community of people, uh, that, that that's going to actually outpace proprietary development when you have just your team who's trying to work on this thing in a silo and then develop it, it's like, no, actually, if you get everyone in the world who's interested in building this thing and is contributing to it, including multiple companies even or individuals, that we can build something that's much better because there is this thing called permissionless innovation where you don't have to go do a training. You don't have to go get certified. You don't have to go get permission to access someone's like code or someone's teachings before you can use it. Um, you actually can just do it because that's how it's licensed. And because of that, there it, it increases the rate and speed at which innovation can occur. And that's the, that's, the actual, that's the actual spirit of open source Dharma. We have a site called opensourcedharma.info where we just kind of lay out this protocol and invite other communities and teachers if they want to release their content as a free cultural work, they can be part of this larger movement. And, I, and we can identify who's doing this so that we can see this large, we can build this larger collection of resources and tools and techniques and guided meditations and in our case, social meditations that people, that anyone could use and adapt so that we can speed up the, the, the we can increase the rate of innovation happening in the Dharma meditation and mindfulness space. And I think that's, you know, it's an ethical thing is what it is. Uh, it's like, hey, we need to do this and do this quick because these technology, psychotechnologies and these teachings are really valuable right now, like they're really needed. And so uh, why would we be hiding them behind a paywall if they're that needed? You know, why, mm -hmm. why would we be doing anything other than trying to get them out there as quickly as possible to get them, ad again, this is evolution, to get them recombined with other methods and techniques as rapidly as possible so that they can, they can, they can serve whatever niches in this larger ecology of human, human experience on the planet Earth that we, that that they're needed in. Um, and so me, to me, there was a disconnect between the old guard proprietary Dharma and meditation teaching models and the spirit of these teachings and what they're about. And to, and to be fair to, to the old guard, like, I don't think they're all aware of open source and all these things. So, so it's not like I'm mad at them exactly. I mean, I do get frustrated, but 
it's also that like this is the this is the call for the next generation of millennials you know, to get oh like this is how Dharma evolves in this generation. We make it open source, you know, mm-hmm. make it freely available, freely accessible, freely remixable, so that it can spread wide, far, can adapt, can evolve, can become part of the larger mix of what's happening. So yeah, that's open source Dharma. <laughs>